tell you now just uh, one of the most shocking survival stories to uh, ever be told. 50 years since a group of people found themselves stranded in the Andes uh, after a plane crash. What had they got to do to stay alive? They had to eat the dead passengers. And uh, we're delighted to say Koche joins us now to tell us about his book and Koche a harrowing story. We'll try and be as sensitive as we can about um, what happened. But uh, my friend, I haven't read your book yet, but I have seen the film based on your story called Alive. Alive, from Do Frank Marshall. Yeah, does the film tell the story the way it was? <laughs> half and half. Uh, something family. Items are invented and others are true. The film is very well done with all the recreation and all the effects, but uh, we never uh, fail into a hole in the snow. And uh, the other is, is re really, uh, for me, my actor have a guitar and play guitar. I never play guitar in my whole life. Yeah. And then the guitar is... But, but Kochi, what is going... true, what is oh. true is that this unimaginable decision that you and your fellow survivors had to make, which was to eat the flesh of other human beings. That, that bit is true. There was no other option if we want to stay alive. We make a, an assembly, a meeting between all, and we argue to do it and not to do it. Not to do it seems to be the same as to die. Everybody decided to eat, but take a decision and then execute it have a great, a great and large space because when you went to, to take a piece of meat, a flesh of the dead body of your friend, frozen body, the hand doesn't obey and you have to make a great effort of energy and mind to make your, your arm to obey. And then it's away, not yeah. immediately, but hours later it's away. And the same with the open mouth to put it inside the mouth and then uh, to swallow. But when you swallow a little piece with a hand in your heart, you say, I'm safe. Um, we've just seen, I think, believe that's your wife who's just come in behind you, Koche. Hello. Hello. Yes, it's my wife. Hello. Hello. She has a wife. Um, and I believe, tell us the, the moment, because you were engaged, weren't you, when you went on to this plane, you weren't married then. Um, and when you were finally rescued and you were in the hospital, what was the first thing you said to your now wife? No, she entered to the CTI where I was with three friends and she re didn't recognise me at the first. I have to call her. And she came and uh, we tried to speak, but we, we, we couldn't, only crying, only crying until the doctor said, go away, Mrs. Soledad, <laughs> go away. <laughs> and in, in the next uh, day, Sunday 24, I went out to the hospital and, and gave a great hug to all my family that was, who were yeah. waiting me out of the hospital. And did you ever believe, Koche, when you were in the Andes Mountains? I mean, there were initially 27 survivors that ended up only 16 being alive. Did you ever think you would get home alive and see your family again? The, the most days I, I, I thought that I was going to go out from there because Parrado and Canesa went out to walk on the Day, uh, December 12th, and I have a great confidence with them to, to reach some place, and they did it. 
but uh, other days in those terrible days that we were waiting for them, I, I realized that they was not going to reach any place. So I put my date of dying on December 24. Uh, well, you, you, you didn't die. Um, you then documented everything in your book, Memories of the Andes, um, an amazing read um, uh, and something, of course, you have to live with those, those memories. Is it something you've come to terms with? No. Uh, the story doesn't live with me, no behind, no. Besides, uh, I I live my life as I imagine those days, and uh, when I am um, in problems, I thought I think about the Andes, and the problems seems to be very little uh, against the, the others. Yeah. So it helped me, helps me, but it's not part of my life. Well, no, no. thank you for telling part us your life. story. We've got to say part goodbye to you. My wife, my wife and my three child and my we eight grandchildren. We have to say goodbye to you now, Kotche, because we have to go take this break. I'm so sorry to interrupt you. Thank you to you and your lovely wife, Soledad, for joining us, and, and we look forward to reading the book. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure to meet you. Aww. Thank you. Thank oh, you. we could talk to him all day. Isn't could it you awful? Imagine? You could run, you imagine? I literally it... can't imagine.